Hello, YouTube. Guess what? We got a little time for one more. I was going to do this one tomorrow. I'm going to get it out the way. I'm going to get out. I got so much content coming. Make sure y'all subscribe. Hit the like button. Turn on the notifications. And watch the video in its entirety. Um, but let's get into this. This is part of the Isaiah 4 and 1 series. Isaiah 4 and 1 states that in that day, seven women, I'm looking around because I'm seeing cars coming. Um, you got to be, there's a lot of reckless driving, even if you park. But anyway, back on the subject. Isaiah 4 and 1 says, seven, in that day, talking about the last days, towards the last days, so on and so forth. Seven women will take hold of one man saying, we will eat our own food, wear our own clothes. Only let us be called by thy name. Take away our disgrace. We talk about the disgrace in this space, in the manosphere. And yes, yes, there are some fakes in here. And that's why I say you need to see both sides of the argument. Me personally, I'm married, but that you know, I don't put my business on. Don't no, just don't do. Don't go there, man. Don't go there, man. Whatever y'all gonna find out, y'all gonna find out. Don't think because a guy is married that disqualifies him to speak because married guys have a, a perspective too. But also, a lot of married guys can be speaking based on what they dealing with currently. So, man, I got stuff all on my shirt. So don't try to disqualify people because they're married, man. You know, that's not every, listen, listen, and this is a disclaimer. Everybody that's married or everybody that wants a divorce or is going to be divorced, it's not always feasible for them to just go run and do it. You know, sometimes you got to use a little more strategy than that when you making decisions in life. Y'all get what I'm saying? Okay, now let's continue. Isaiah 4 and 1 says that in that day, seven women will take hold of one man saying, we will eat our own food, wear our own clothes, only let us be called by your name, take away our disgrace. What's the disgrace? Unsubmissive women, 304 women, they're just getting pounded. And then they come later on. They done change their mind. And they want to kind of hide what they did. Move to other towns. But then to do, do some research. Find out she was a 304. Masquerading as a girl. I don't, well, I don't do this. Uh -uh, I'll never do that. And he find out. Vetting. How she really is. That's disgrace. Only fans. Disgrace. Amateur P.O.R. fill in the blank playing hangman. Disgrace. Listen, man. I'm not the one. I'm going to be more fair. But if you're looking for a pander bear, somebody's going to pander for you, ladies. Or, or if you guys are looking for a pander bear because you really want to simp out here, you done already done pay alimony, child support, and you can't handle being by yourself, so you want to make that same mistake again, you in the wrong place, buddy. Isaiah 4 and 1 is coming to pass. Y'all dudes better learn how to have relationships and protect yourself at the same time. Nothing wrong with having relationships. There's something wrong with being in a relationship with somebody that doesn't value you. That's a disgrace, too. Women that don't value their men. Women who secretly like pookies. They like pookies. Or, or let's go here. Let's go here. Women who are a particular race, and it's not just black women that do this, but because they don't like or secretly respect in their hearts the men in their race, they are creating conflict just on that premise alone within their relationship. All of this is the disgrace. This is the disgrace that the Bible is talking about. So, 
all of the promiscuity, all of the disrespect, all the women who are more masculine than feminine, all of this is the disgrace that's going to lead guys to saying, okay, I don't need you. If you're going to be around me, you're going to have to prove yourself. You're gonna, guys' value is going up. Women's value is going down. Most. We're going to talk about the 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 traits that make a woman an asset tomorrow. We're talking about depreciation today, though. And this is the Isaiah 4 and 1 series, and I titled this video, Most Women Will Depreciate. And listen, before I get into this, please understand one thing, that when you challenge people in this space, and, and people should, hey, challenge me if that's what you want to do. But when you challenge people, you got to stick to the topic, not appearance, because appearance don't matter. That don't matter. Especially guys should not be judging each other's appearance, man. That's kind of fruity, man. For real. But women, most women will depreciate because they're not going to allow themselves to be assets due to their entitlement behavior, so on and so forth. This is why guys believe that they need to go overseas because those women, even though they're pretty much the same, they know how to mask those characteristics. And they don't have the same access to the things that we have access to in this country, which therefore would make some of them a little more humble. Me personally, I believe most of them are just putting on the act. And I believe that, that most women are similar with some unicorns out there. I don't, I'm not a walk. I'm more nay walk. And in the sense that I don't believe that every single one of them is bad. I just think that most of them are going to present eventually those bad characteristics. And that's just a fact. And that's coming from somebody that has been married. That's just a fact, man. That's just, and when you stand on them and you confront them, most of them will not receive correction for whatever reason. The same things that some of these, this this how they do. This is how they do. And tell me if I'm wrong, married guys. If the same stuff that they want you to leave other people alone for doing, they do. Holding your, the flaws and the mistakes over your head. They do it. But yet, when your friends do it, you shouldn't deal with them no more. If your sister, your mother, your father do it, you shouldn't deal with them no more. All of this is going to be the reason why guys going to be having harems. They're going to be having harems. like they, And some of them ain't going to have no marriage license on none of them. It's going to happen whether people want it to happen or not. Whether your preacher want it to happen or not, it's going to happen. And it's going to happen because of behavior. Most women will depreciate. Therefore, Isaiah 4 and 1 is coming to pass. And one day, the stuff that's mentioned in that scripture is going to be normal. All of that, Miss Independent, all of that, a man got to be this and that, all of that, I am the prize, all that's going to be out the window. All that's going to be disgrace. And women going to be ashamed to say those things, I would say, in the next five to ten years. And most of them, like, they're already changing. Like, you see women apologizing. You know, you still got a lot of them just bucking up. I'm going to do it. I got to have a high value man, blah, blah, blah. He got to look like this. He got to listen. I'm going to tell you all like this. Any woman that thinks I'm ugly, right? She has the right to to that, to say that. But what they're not going to be able to do 
most of them is find a guy that's the all-around package that's going to give them exactly what they need leadership you need leadership you need and sometimes this means you gonna have to kind of check your woman up a good leader as a man you ain't gonna not argue oh we never argue oh you ain't been a leader then because women are too emotional not to ever argue with them now you want to kind of limit it but they're too emotional oh we never argue that means she's winning you being a punk you being a punk so you telling me if for three weeks straight you go to her for sex and she denies you you don't argue with her you being a punk and you still celebrating with her Mother's Day, birthdays, anniversaries, and she don't even respect you enough to give you some. That's why Isaiah 4 and 1, that's why me personally, I don't believe in monogamy. Like I did for years, but then things start going weird and I start studying this stuff and I said, nah, man, this I knew it was something about it. The Most High was doing otherwise back in biblical days. You don't believe me. 2 Samuel chapter 12. Read it. Read it. But most of them are going to depreciate. And let's get into this list. Y'all know I like to write my thoughts down so I won't be forgetting nothing. And that's when people start pausing and stuttering too much because they're forgetting what they wanted to say. Just write it down. So, what depreciates a woman? It's way more, I just listed six. A big mouth is number one. Always saying the wrong thing. Flirting with other guys. Listen, you, if you get caught flirting with another man, or you catch your woman flirting with another man, her behavior better improve. And if it doesn't and you let her stay around in her same level without making her sweat at least, like hopping on her heels or you just weak. She should not be having emotional affairs and then her behavior is declining. And yet you're not trying to figure out when you're going to go file them papers. How is she able to do that? Like she the only woman. Listen, you can't pull that little Christianity stuff with. You say, well, you're supposed to be a prophet. You can't pull that with me, man. No woman with my last name and no woman with your last name is supposed to be dictating anything to you or doing anything with another man. And if she does get caught in an emotional affair or flirting around, then her behavior better improve. Or how are you still with her? Unless you already planning your escape. I get it. Non-supportive talk or talking too freaking much. If everything you say she disagreeing with, that's depreciating her. You should be able to catch that. Like everything you talk about, she try to flip it on you or it becomes an argument. That's depreciating. Who would marry somebody that's doing that? Who? Put your name in the comments if you would marry somebody that did what I mentioned in number one. Number two, whorish behavior outside of marriage. Listen, that is a no-no. They say, well, you did it. Well, you're Listen, a man's body count and a woman's body count, two different things. A heterosexual man is not going to have his guts rearranged by sleeping with women. But a woman would. A woman would. You say, oh, that's LDE. No, you just want men to buy you gifts and accept your horror get out of here ain't no lde some of the same dudes you saying got lde they'll make you moan and groan but we ain't gonna get into them. we ain't gonna get grown. number three age they're aging without See, we see, have y'all seen the woman on YouTube, the 70-year-old that would fit like that? 
Me personally, here's what I'd say. It just depends on the person. Y'all think all these young girls got good sex? You think again, some of them, some of them, y'all heard me talk about that Dr. Oz special some years back where he kind of examined old women and young women and some of the older women were better than the young women. But let's get it straight. If you got a big mouth, that just, you still depreciate so age without health and maturity is depreciating just like we're going to get into the assets tomorrow if they aging but they're becoming more mature and they keep being conscious and they help that's an asset number four is non-sexualness that's a depreciate because listen especially a woman who wants you to be in a monogamous relationship with her you might as well just bring plantations back and uh, give me cornbread and grits and make me work for free. Because to ask a man not to have sex, you're really enslaving him. Especially if you think he going to stick to you. Oh, so, okay. So you're that special where a man should just be in a relationship with you and not getting any meaningful sex. Man, you are tremendous. I would love to see what makes you so good. Next. Oh, let's, well, let's, let's continue on this. Declining desire for sex. No matter what women are supposed to desire their men. No matter what. If you don't desire your man, you shouldn't be with him. It's selfish for you to be with him. And foolish. Go get you a man that you're going to want to put your mouth on him. That you're going to want to touch him. That you're going to want to give him visuals. I, like, I don't get, like, I mean, I don't get it. Let's move on. Let's move on. Move on. In most cases, there is no excuse for any woman who doesn't have frequent sex with her husband or boyfriend. The truth is she wants to get down and dirty with somebody else. Listen, man. Listen. Any of y'all that's watching this, understand this. There's no excuse. If, if ain't nothing wrong with her mentally, and ain't nothing wrong with her to the point where she can't perform physically, and if she can't perform physically then she might as well just let you go and skedaddle somewhere else. How can she demand monogamy if she don't, if she can't or won't perform physical SEX? So, like I said, the truth is she wants to get down and dirty with someone else. Don't buy her gifts or pay her or, or, or pay her bills or anything. Just turn her loose. And I guarantee you that woman that wasn't doing it, it's because she got some hole in her. She want to She want to do it to somebody else every time. It ain't no excuse. Either she's evil like Jezebel. If she doesn't want to give it to somebody else, then she's evil within. She's holding grudges. She's like Jezebel. Because there's what other explanation is it? Women that's married to this man but don't want to have sex with him. Women that you and long-term boyfriend, y'all looking to get married. But you don't want to have sex for them. Either you want to be a hoe with somebody else. Or you are evil. Like you need to find out what, what's making you tick like that. What's making you not want to do with your boyfriend who you're supposed to be marrying. Or with your husband. But boy, let them go, let them go smash something else, though. They the worst dude in the world. For having normal desires they, that God gave them, they the worst dude in the world, though. Now, now you finna hear from the prophet. I guarantee that most of these women that I'm talking about in this number four, if you divorce them, you break up with them within six months. They have been uh, slept, probably ate booty 
and did everything to one of three men. Guaranteed. That's why you that's another reason why you can't go back to exes, man. You don't know they can be eating. I ain't gonna say it twice because then the algorithm. B-O-O-T fill in the blank playing hangman. And then they come back and eat off your silverware and kiss you on the lips. No. Once you let them go, it's time for you to move on. Like, yeah, yo, new one could be doing it too, but hopefully you vet her out and she ain't if she did do it, she ain't did it in six years or some stuff where the whole the residue of his doo-doo done wore off number five having young kids these women can literally have three four five kids and if they got a big butt or a nice shape or they cute in the face they'll try to look at you like they better than you no you got all them ain't mine so you and just like with other guys they depreciate how, how can you look at a woman that who knows what she was doing in the process of being impregnated by those guys she could have been freaking away then they said forget it I ain't coming out and then here you come with your flowers. Like I said, kids drain energy. And like Coach Greg says, that he done person. I heard say this. I'm going to give him his credit. Kids are lovable liabilities. And the not last thing I got mentioned, but it ain't the last thing. Previous divorces, alimony, child support. If they hit somebody else with that, what makes you think they won't do it to you? Especially the ones that were being unsubmissive, they were being confrontational, they were being non-sexual, and their husband got tired of them, and he left, and they hit him with child support, alimony, like he did something wrong. Don't, don't be one of them people that think every guy that get divorced is his fault. It's not. It's not. It's not. Like sometimes women could be doing things and saying things and their own conceit or entitlement or other traits will make them not be able to see the error of their ways. And y'all guys, let's keep it real, man. You you've been she been acting up for a while, man, and now you the, the urge has come back. Now you want to see what else is out there. You know what else is out there? A few unicorns spread out in the earth and the same thing, if not worse. So you're going to have to find another way to fulfill them desires of yours. Because women depreciate. For these are just a couple of the ways and characteristics that cause them to depreciate. You know, people, most people that make it all those years in marriage is because they said, forget it. No matter what, I'm not divorced. I mean, they, it's not always, it's probably a few unicorn love stories. But most of them just said, I'm not divorcing. Or they said it's cheaper to keep her or some other stuff. Because you ain't divorced her, but you cheating on her. And how is what how what makes it cheating? Her not knowing you doing it. That's what makes it cheating. If she don't know what you're doing and she think you ain't doing nothing, then in your case, it's cheating. That's like taking a test in school and this, another kid reach behind their back and give you the answers. But the teacher don't know you're doing it. What is that? Cheating. So, think about this, man. It, you know, married people still getting married. And it's perfectly fine. But I hope that they both will play their roles 
the whole time, especially you women demanding monogamy. Boy, you better be, and not just in the beginning. You know how a lot of them, they flood you with sex in the beginning when you first meet them, first year or two. Then that third year, it just start falling off. Little by little, more and more. And when, if you allow that to fall off, then what falls off next? She falls off. She begins to be in men's faces more. And then sometimes, don't be so quick to confront her when she start dealing with other men. Sometimes you should sit back and just see what she going to do. You should. And I guarantee you a lot of other married men will tell you the same thing. Because these years will get away from you, man. And by the way, because women depreciate, any baby, no matter if she gets mad, leaves, let her go. There's a lot of women that'll take her place. You been on YouTube, TikTok? Anybody that says they're pregnant by you, DNA test. Every time. Don't I don't care if it's your own wife. Get a DNA test. Oh, uh, you I can't believe you. You assassinate. Because you know the ones in the church. Oh, you assassinating their character. No, this is 2022. People done got a little better at hiding stuff. And a woman that get rocked by another man, whether you know it or not, she gonna become a little more disrespectful. If she want to get rocked or if she get rocked, she going to become a little more disrespectful. That's why I told you. When they start having that, you catch their little text, emotional affair, all of that, you got to demand that they get better. If they don't get better, don't waste your years, man. Just move on. You said, well, we got kids. Don't let no woman that don't want to show you respect dangle no kids. You either, if, if she ain't right, you either got to fight for your kids or you might have to just, like, co-parenting don't work. You might have to buy you a house where you ain't living, y'all not together. But your kids can come right next door, turn the key, be in your house. You know, you might have to do that. That would work better. If they'll cooperate like an adult, it could work better than you trying to be in a relationship with her. She don't want you. That sex holding that back, she don't want you. Don't listen to her. No matter what she say, if you ain't getting it three or more times a week or at least getting it offered to you, with her being the aggressor sometimes and it's genuine, man, get out of here. But anyway, long video, long video. Watch the whole video if you can't. Come back to it. I had enough time to get something that I was going to do tomorrow and today. Most women going to depreciate. We're going to talk about unicorns tomorrow. What makes them an asset? Because y'all y'all want to take the, the weak route and just disregard them all. That's 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 like a form. That's kind of similar to racism, discrimination. Instead of finding out you 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 saw a few black thugs on TV. Now you don't like no black people. Every time they come around, this is how they do in Wisconsin. This is how a lot of them get down in Wisconsin. The ones that's not like that, they treat them the, like the ones that are. And so, like, here in Wisconsin, it's, like, segregated, which, if your reasoning is right, ain't nothing wrong with it. But it's something wrong with you judging everybody with the same scope. That means that you're not that bright. And that's what they do here. And that's what guys do in the manosphere. Like, you, they don't want to vet. They don't want to... Uh, 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 do those things that's going to cause arguments and conflicts with that woman who thinks she should be with you. 
Like, like, okay, you want me to marry you. I'm, I want a lie detector test. Then you ask things like, because it'll pick up. Will you change down the line sexually? Will you change down the line emotionally? It'll pick up. If she up to some hypergamous stuff, especially you NFL players and all y'all, you know, celebrities, make her take that test, man. Why you? Why would you give up half your wealth? What you wanted your whole life to get, you giving it to her because you was having sex with her two years ago? Her sex worth millions? Ain't no woman's sex worth no millions. I don't care how cold she is with it. Their sex ain't worth no millions, man. So guys need to learn how to vet. And, but like I said, they do what a racist person do. They just want to throw everybody in the same category. They don't want to find out if it's something out there. So they want to throw them all in the same category. If you throw them all in the same category, be willing to sort through the categories and, and see if it's something worth pulling out. Because like I said in the last video, if you just stop dealing with women in that way, you allowing your ex, who's probably an op towards you, to win. She don't want you to have nobody. She's winning. She shouldn't win because you not being, like, fair. She shouldn't. Because she would love to find some simp and you just be like, oh, well, I ain't mad. I ain't doing this. I ain't doing that. Some women, you just got to know how to keep it with them and be up front. Like, hey, listen, if you want a long-term relationship with me, you're going to have to prove yourself. I ain't got to prove nothing. All right. Hey, uh, I'm going to drop you back off. Block. I ain't got to prove nothing to you. Who is you? Thank you. Hey, who didn't think he is? And somebody got to prove something to him. He could become a millionaire. If he don't vet you right, you will be a woman that don't even like him and, and get his millions. But anyway, I'm going to close this video. This is the Truth Man Channel is no matrix. No thinking that these women are sugar and spice and everything nice. That's what they taught us when we was little. It's just not true. They're not everything nice, man. They're not. Some of them might be nice. There's unicorns out there. But they not sugar and spice and everything nice, man. It's not nice to withhold sex from a man with two hanging testicles that want to empty themselves. It's not nice. Not polite. It's rude. But thanks for watching.